Hello and welcome back to The Practice Odyssey, season six, Jen? Whoa, is that right? Six. For those of you who are new, my name is Alex. And I'm Jen. And uh, if you've not listened to one of our episodes before, The Practice Odyssey is your podcast where we take some flute method or that has said that it can help with your flute playing. And we take that um, source and we apply all of its rules for two weeks to our flute playing and to our life if needed. And we see if it indeed changed our life or if it didn't. Today, we have a special project that we did which is the Christmas winter project. So in mm-hmm. the past gen, we've done some other projects such as the working through the, the artist way, which mm-hmm. by Julia Cameron, which is a book all about how to become a better artist. Jen had the beautiful idea for our project, our winter project. Uh, so I thought, Jen, maybe you could explain to the listeners what we did and what we're about to discuss here on the podcast in case they haven't read the title of the podcast (laughs) (laughs) just in case um so i thought it would be an interesting idea to explore um the basics emphasis on basics of sound production and how to record ourselves playing the flute and you see a lot more people on social media playing music and performing music that way so um which i think Mm. is really really cool anyway so i thought hey well this would be cool except i have no idea about recording i mean i do this podcast but really it's just i have a little microphone which i plug into my (laughs) ipad and yeah that's about it off um, we go. So I'm yeah. very high tech. Alex is a bit more pro with her setup. <laughs> yeah, so I thought our challenge could be for over the holidays is to find a short course, um, a blog, an article, anything that kind of started from like with the assumption that you have no knowledge about this topic whatsoever. You don't know any of the lingo. Mm-hmm. You might know the word microphone. But that's about it. And um, and kind of learn something about how you could uh, record yourself uh, playing your instrument and produce a pretty decent uh, recording to post online. But anyway, but yeah, that's what we did over our Christmas break. Uh, that sounds really awesome, Jen. So that probably also leads us into how did you go doing this project reading it what what what, I guess the first question I should probably ask is what medium did you choose for Mm. this project okay so I found resources online for the two projects which I chose to look at uh one is free and the other you have to pay for the one I started with is um just a blog post by Andrew Simon from ProducerSociety.com. Basically, he gives some handy tips about how to set up your microphone so that you can get a good recording of your flute and then ways which you can put your um, raw recording into a DAW, D-A-W. This is already getting so technical. The things I've learned, Alex. (laughs) Um, And then kind of fiddle around with basic tools in the door. I chose this one because A, he gives me pictures, which I love. Oh, um, that's really Because handy. when people start writing stuff like the 300 to 5,000 hertz, I just kind of phase out. I'm like, oh, I'm back in maths class. No. So I like mm-hmm. pictures. Um, and also I liked, he talked a lot about um, different microphone types that you can buy um, and what's the difference between each of them and the benefits and maybe disadvantages of them. Um, did you learn about condenser and dynamic mics like I did? I did. Condenser, ah! dynamic, and ribbon. Those are the <gasps> three. I don't know if I got to ribbon. Oh, my gosh. But what I liked it is he gave some suggestions on kind of how where to put the microphone so that you could get, um, a, a, get a good recording for your flute. He said that maybe you have it two feet away from... Uh, your flute and put it about halfway down the body so that you don't get the the sounds of the air getting picked up and also to reduce key clicks so as an absolute beginner and newbie I found that quite helpful because like I don't know how far to put the microphone and 
But what I liked about it is he didn't use a huge amount of jargon. He kind of explains it in plain English. Yeah. He's clearly aiming his audience for people like me who are complete newbies at this. We've, I've literally <laughs> just rocked up with a microphone and have no idea what to do. And then, like, once you got onto um, having recorded it, then he said, okay, when you put it into a door like GarageBand, that's what I use, um, mm-hmm. then he just said, this is what you can do to the actual recording itself to make um, it sound more clean and for it to be able to sound its best so that you can actually see, hear the flute, maybe not just so much the key clicks or so much of the air. So I recorded a short piece um, and played around with some of the ideas he said in there. And um, mm-hmm. I used the alto because I figured that the alto mm-hmm. has a crazy, it's like the flute, the concert flute, except exaggerated. There's so much airiness in the sound of the alto flute. So that was kind of my yeah. first project. And it gives like pictures of what the EQ should look like um, with diagrams. And <laughs> it's great. And he has little um, pointy arrows which say, if you want to increase a bit of warmth in your sound, increase this little bit here. And if you want to eliminate some of the breathiness, maybe try pulling it down here. And I really, I really, (laughs) I was like, (laughs) woohoo, I can do this now. (laughs) And I mean, I'm sure there's like more technique you could get into. And I'm sure he's like glossed over a lot of details. It was just really clear about, these are the particular things you can do to control these particular aspects of the flute sound. Anyway, yeah, so that was that yeah. article by Andrew Simon. We'll put the link below. Um, um, well, Alex, so yeah. what was what was your first project? I'm glad we, I took this maybe in a slightly different direction. Oh, uh, I loved it. Well, see, we didn't talk about this at all. We just... We I kind didn't. of just threw the idea at Alex and she went, sure, that sounds great. And then we didn't say anything else about it. So we, because we were kind of curious about where we'd go with this project and how we'd interpret it. Alex, so, so yeah. what did you do, Alex? Uh, so I did go down the road of, you know, sound production, but mm-hmm. I really struggled to find, um, okay, so my immediate sources, since I like to see like, um, like uh, visual and like audio and kind of read I like to do all three, if possible, mm. to try and learn mm. the material. And I figured with sound, it would probably probably be helpful if I watched a video as well to try and kind of learn this. So I went to the best <laughs> free resource for that on the internet, which is YouTube, um, oh, for me at least. What a, yes, what and, a glorious uh, <laughs> thing it is. Yes, yes. I didn't really find much for flute production, like for yeah. making flute sound that wasn't yeah. from like at least it was all quite old and technology yeah. i believe like you know is is getting pretty quick especially with different ways to edit mm-hmm. on computers nowadays mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. it was a little tricky for me to find something flute specific so i ended up for my first one i did an hour and a half course which we'll link in the show notes called audio production learn the fundamentals and it was by the user or the creator invato toots plus and okay. he has over 750,000 su- uh, subscribers. So I thought, okay, That's he's a probably pretty good at what he does. And the video was only two years old. <laughs> and okay. even then, when he started using the software, it was already looking a little outdated. But um, at that point, I was just trying to find something that looked reputable and go from that. Yeah. And with instruments, he only talks about miking guitars, which I was like, oh, oh. okay, but maybe there's still some things from there I can apply to flute playing as well. And I yeah. did learn a whole bunch from the course. Um, so, which was interesting because like, I, I liked how you mentioned that um, in your guide, Andrew mentions that the mic should be at least like two feet away from the flute. So that way you don't get all those funny sounds. Because mm-hmm. in this one, he was like, oh, yeah, your mic should always try and be as po- close as possible to the thing you want to mic. But that's mm. the problem we have with flutes because it's not only because like to make a sound on the flute, we have a column of air moving and you don't want yep. necessarily all of that distortion going into the mic. You just want the sound. It was a really good. So for miking the flute, it wasn't so helpful. There were a lot of but there were lots of other things I found helpful that would help me kind of pave my way to help mm. my flute recording, if that mm. makes sense. 
For example, he mentioned about the different standards for recording, like audio, for oh. either just like an audio file or if you're recording mm-hmm. for video. Mm. Um, he also delved a lot into the theory of sound, which I thought was really cool. Um, mm. And then the part I thought was also fun is he talks about dynamic, uh, like the different microphones. And he did like an example of each mic and held it up and showed how they um how the soundscape i guess you know i yeah i varies for each mic for example you have um which actually i found out i have uh there's like two ones that he discussed a lot in detail which were the dynamic and condenser mics now i know yes. about this ribbon mic and i'm like what <laughs> there's what? a third. what is this ribbon so, mic? Yep. i know now i need to delve into that one too <laughs> um so the one that i normally record our podcasts on is my microphone that I've I think I've had for like over five years and before that I had the older version of it is Mm -hmm. the h5 the zoom h5 Mm -hmm. um and that one is a condenser mic and it also has the like the amp built in so I don't need a separate amp to run the mic and Mm -hmm. it has two little microphones within this one microphone so if I talk, I'll see, maybe I can get this, although I might already have it set on stereo, so it might not work. But if I talk over here, you can hear it maybe on one side of your ear. And then if I talk over here, you hear it on the other side, which is really cool uh, for like yeah. making cool effects. But if you're doing a podcast, you don't really want that. No. Because <laughs> it gets annoying, which is why you I'm wondering if hide I think when I... you're moving around. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. So, and then also when you're playing the flute, you know, we, we try to like, if you're sending in a recording, you don't want them to like hear, like, unless you're trying to create some cool effect for some avant garde music piece. So for, for, mm. for standard classical auditions, you kind of want it to be in one place. Um, yeah. Dynamic mics are really good for loud sounds and live instruments. Whereas condenser mics, they have a higher resolution and that makes them better for quieter, more complex sounds. Uh, And then another way you can kind of think of it from what I learned is that dynamic mics are a bit more durable, like they can handle louder sounds in general, whereas the condenser mics are better for softer sounds in general yeah so anyway so that's something i learned and i've been having kind of fun this week playing around with the microphones thanks to this um video Mm -hmm. and then the other thing i picked up from this that was really useful was just setting gain he talks about uh like kind of a foolproof way to check it and Mm -hmm. he said just basically when you're setting the gain on your microphone um to take the loudest possible sound and you make that your minus six decibels. And then yeah. basically you have like, you know, minus six decibels before, like once you reach, if you go past zero decibels, that's when you start to get distortion and it sounds really bad. So yeah. if you keep your loudest sound at minus six, if it happens to go over, it's okay. Cause you still have a little bit of wiggle room, but in general, yeah. it's going to sound really nice. Mm. So yeah, so I, I kind of played around with that a bit, kind of leads into my second project. And then he also had a section on how to create the best acoustics, which <laughs> made me realize how lazy I've gotten sometimes with our podcasting, sadly enough. Uh, the, pro- the parts that are really important, like when it comes to what we're studying and what we're looking into, I spend a lot of time, but my set up to make the acoustics for the podcast <laughs> itself <laughs> i used to lay blankets everywhere and you know i would hang them and everything and i just i don't do that anymore we have a carpet in here which comes in handy and i do mm-hmm. try to record on days when we have laundry because <laughs> of my laundry is oh, hanging and that also takes up a bit of sound but yeah other than that, I haven't gotten around to that. He kind of reminded me how important that is. So now that yeah. I have all this new knowledge of how to like mic, I was thinking that in our new apartment, we have this little, what they call in German, an Abstellraum. And it's just basically mm-hmm. like an extra closet. Um, uh-huh. And it's full of stuff already. So it's got like lots of clothes and it's got lots of other yeah. things that are really soft. So it's already quite a dead room. So I was thinking maybe as like my next project, maybe my summer project or when I have time, I can like kind of put some more soft material maybe on the door and like put Mm. a little tiny carpet in there. And then I have like a little baby podcast recording studio and also for audio on the flute. However, for auditions, I don't know if I would want to record in there because then they're just going to see my closet. 
So, but it's, yeah, but it's interesting with that because I've no, I've noticed that because like this wasn't the only article I read. I read a few, and Ooh. a lot of them were saying that if you want, if you're recording classical flute, you actually want the natural acoustics of the room mm. to get a bit of the ambient sound but it just creates the kind of more you know I guess what the listener is yeah. hearing it gets that more open sound because normally we're using our flute in in a room and an area and that's actually in a way becomes part of the instrument which is quite beautiful yeah anyway so it's interesting yeah. there's, but there's a lot of different philosophies on it um but yeah that was um my first one so it was um yeah hour and a half learned a bunch of different things and that also led me to my second project idea which didn't take very mm. long at all because i was running out of time um but jen i think we should hear about maybe your second one which sounded like maybe you paid for this I next did. one i did and maybe Though... you earned more bang for your buck something like that well, I mean, yeah, uh, it was good. So I, I kind of paid for it by accident. So I decided, oh, well, might as well make the most of it. So um, I signed up for a platform called Skillshare, which has a lot of... Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, so I had a free month and then I forgot about oh, needing yeah. to sign out after the free month. So now I've got a whole year's worth of membership to Skillshare. So I figured, you know what? I'm going to learn a lot of skills. So um, I found GarageBand for Songwriting and Music Production Module 1 by Fran Solo. I figured as, as I was looking on my, in my article before, it was about moving the EQ and everything. Anyway, this kind of brought home how little I know about GarageBand, which because I own like Apple products, this is not endorsed or sponsored in any way. That's just what I happen yeah. to have. Um, the free uh, music, what am I thinking, editing software on Apple products is GarageBand. So I f so that's what I use. Anyway, so my previous, the article had kind of made me realize how little I knew about GarageBand. Like literally, um, I know how to put a recording into GarageBand. I know how yes. to make it shorter and longer and do basic editing and I know how to pick excellent um, automatic effects for my sound. So for podcasts, I go to narration setting so that it's nice and clear. Yes. That it sounds like, very. This nice. is the this is the depth of which I know GarageBand. So um, it's very very basic, let's say. Um, so I decided. Do you know what? It's probably going to be good if I actually learn a bit more about GarageBand and the different things that I can do because, you know, that'll be helpful. Knowledge is power. So, yeah, I did um, I did these courses on Skillshare and it's very kind of step-by-step. -step. He's got the different um, courses and they take maybe like two to three hours to complete. But mm -hmm. then, yeah, it started getting more and more complex and he went into how to change EQ and stuff. And then, you know, he shows you how to kind of write your own basic song on it with all the loops and everything which is kind of fun just to mess around with but anyway it was yeah that was very helpful but mm. a lot more comprehensive so I feel like I've got a far greater hold of GarageBand and it's very um well set out and you can work through mm -hmm. a project as he kind of explains for things to do and you know that's too funny I almost did a GarageBand one too because I was like <gasps> yes. maybe this will help you know streamline the editing process for us <laughs> Yes. <laughs> for the podcast and also if we're doing any other editing um for other audio recordings i don't know yeah. the last time i did just an audio recording on the flute mm. that wasn't for the podcast usually they want video for auditions yeah. and then if i do like something to post on the internet there's usually i usually have to do some video with it too yeah now that i think about it a little bit well, this is what I discovered is you can get a video and you can add it into your GarageBand project. <gasps> oh, that's That's what cool. I discovered. Yeah. Yeah, that was one of the cool things I found out. <laughs> your project, your second project. Oh. oh, yes, my second project. So for the second one, I, I'm sorry, listeners. I originally, I wanted to do a full course in German. That was my goal. Whoa. That was my goal. <laughs> Whoa, that is a big goal. I know. Like not a, it didn't have to be a long course, but like maybe a few hours, and then I could talk about the difference in languages. I had high hopes for this, and then yes. I realized how hard it is to wrangle a puppy. <laughs> so, yeah. I'm no. so sorry. 
So I ended up just going down another YouTube video route of just figuring out how I can use my Zoom H5 to the best of its oh. abilities. So including, which I hadn't realized before, because since the amp is built into the microphone, you can hook up more microphones to it. So what no. I also didn't... Yeah, there, you can hook up like two because there's two outlets. <gasps> so it's pretty cool. Um, it does get quite complicated figuring out how to do everything after that, but um, it is possible. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> um, yeah, so I went down. There's a little video. Oh, there's a video by a man called the podcast host on YouTube. Because also, mm -hmm. originally, I, I also forgot that we wanted to focus a lot on flute. So I also looked down the way of, like, miking for podcasts. Do you know what? That's probably <laughs> so, going to be quite handy. Please send me all your knowledge after this podcast okay uh same for you the article but from andrew simon sounds like amazing i mean we're gonna put everything in the show notes listeners so you're gonna have yes, it all yeah we will. Um, but yeah so this one was about how to set the gain and levels on your zoom h5 for voice recording mm. and so and it was a really like straightforward way of how you can like hook up a different microphone and use mm. it in like in together with your with your Zoom H5, which is what hey. I'm doing right now. So hopefully it'll create a nice, well-rounded sound for the Ooh. podcast this week. Maybe, maybe not. Listeners, let me know what you think. <laughs> Does it sound better? Does it sound worse? Does it not? Yeah. Anyways, let us know. Uh, <laughs> uh, but yeah, it was really quite fun trying to figure out how to get this all set up and hooked up. And it was a really mm -hmm. straightforward um, video. It's only like five and five, six minutes long. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, found it really helpful. And now I'm like deep down the rabbit hole of like setting the different levels on my microphone and just getting to know the equipment that I already have. Because in the last mm -hmm. course, the Envato Toots Plus video, he had this Sennheiser mic that he used and it sounded amazing. And I was like, oh, <laughs> I must have it. And I looked it up and it was like, of course, like 700 euros or something. And I was like, I can, I mean, a listener, no. we would, I would love to buy that kind of microphone for our show but uh we just continue with the, the 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 stuff that i have and it's a very good mic so but yeah um so i watched that and got some new information and got more comfortable with how to set the different gain levels on it and how you can set various gain levels for all the mm. different microphones as well yeah. which i thought was super cool yeah so that was oh. what i did for my second one it wasn't very long it was free but um i wish i could have done a bit more i had really big plans for this but then i'll, I'll post a picture of our puppy in the instagram if you haven't already seen oh my it gosh. but so cute. he's really cute he apologizes too i'm sure <laughs> <laughs> and maybe over uh, for our next summer or winter project i'll do that and get through go through a whole course and then maybe the audio Oh, quality of our podcast will be so good that she'll just be like, oh yeah, she definitely did it. So Oh yeah, she definitely, or she got that $700 mic. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. I got the Sennheiser. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. Um, but yeah, that's what I did for my second project. But before I say my verdict, I feel like Jen, I have to know, did any of these videos, uh, not videos, did any of these, no, Skillshare is video based. Your videos about GarageBand or the articles about how to best mic your flute or set the EQ, did it help? Did it make your flute playing worse? What's your verdict? Okay. Yes. So I had fun. I did a few recordings. So um, Do we I didn't mention these recordings. I mean, like I've got them on my phone. Uh, I could, we could add them in if you want. Um, I was doing, I was using the alto flute, and um, I used a lot of the tips, um, particularly from the producing article, and it made a massive difference. You, I found that yeah, he was right. There was this particular frequency which he points out in his article. Mm -hmm. um, which gets rid of a lot of the kind of the extra airiness of the sound. It just kind of cleaned up the sound. He also tells you like really clearly where to put, where to alter the EQ to get a bit more of that warmth back in. So you're hearing more of the lower frequencies. Mm -hmm. um, and, and that really did improve it as well. I don't know. It wasn't much. It was really subtle um, when I followed his instructions, but it was enough just to make it sound like it was almost thinking about being a little bit more professional recording so yeah. I was like happy with that um and then of course this Skillshare um this Skillshare course was so thorough and I learned so <laughs> much about GarageBand um yeah. so yeah my verdict is I really like this article by Andrew Simon and mm -hmm. um super clear really easy if you've literally just got 
even your phone and you've just recorded on your phone, super helpful, really easy to follow, just a few clear, very basic tips and it can make a massive difference. Um, mm. For those people who have GarageBand, um, I found Skillshare really helpful. I like them because they're really step-by-step. -step. They take you through in a huge amount of detail and you do learn a lot from them, but then you have to pay for it. Um, yeah. Yeah. But Skill Skillshare was the one which I happened to accidentally be subscribed to. Um, I'm sure there are many others out there. Again, not a sponsor. I feel like I'm name dropping <laughs> a lot. <laughs> I know. <laughs> All the name drops for this episode. Um, Alex, what was your verdict? I... Do you feel like you're now a sound producer? I am 100% a sound producer now. Yes. Uh, yes, uh, hire me. No. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I'm definitely the... Uh, I would say I'm just going to com kind of combine both. Like the the second one was great for the specific needs that I set for it. I mean, it was only a, a six minute video. So again, listeners, apologies. But um, that one was quite good for learning how to set the mic. It was very straightforward with lots of visual examples of what to do. So if you have an H5 Zoom microphone um, in the right order, <laughs> H5 Zoom recorder microphone, um, it's great. It'll help you out and it'll help you get more than one setup as well if you want to have different levels of sound. Mm -hmm. And the other one, the Envato Toots Plus uh, video, it was definitely, I, I know more now and it's also done just enough to keep my interest peaked that I want to continue down the rabbit hole mm. and, you know, make it even better moving forward. So it made me, yeah, like first off, it was like, oh yeah, now I know a bit more. Hopefully it's sounding better both for the podcast and for flute playing in general, because I do like mm -hmm. making little flute compilation videos of various um, arrangements I make. And so that I found really helpful. And that I also like that he touched on audio for both just an audio recording as like a podcast or for video production, like a film. And I mm -hmm. like that he discussed the differences in those and which mics are best for those as well. So if you want a, a general course for like audio engineering, I would highly recommend that. So yeah, I think my verdict is very positive for both too. And now I'm, you know, have to be careful not to spend all of my money on just dog toys and microphones and soundproofing <laughs> equipment because that's very likely going to happen. <laughs> so but, good. Um, yeah, I guess that wraps up our winter project, which means that mm -hmm. season, wait, what season is this again? Season oh, six is on its season way. Six. It is. And next, in a fortnight, we will start with our first version of our actual project for season six. Mm, it's a big one. It's a big one. We are, we are excited and nervous. Shall we no, reveal we are it going... now? No, let's not Oh, should we do it? it? <laughs> they can wait for it. You're going to have to join us next time to find out what this behemoth is. Could it be yeah, bigger than... Why they had could to wait be, so long? Could it be bigger than <laughs> Taffanel and Gobert? I don't it, know. It could be bigger than Taffanel and oh Gobert. Oh, my gosh. Is there oh such a thing Lord. possible? Oh, my gosh. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so oh, listeners, you have to tune in. We're very excited to bring this yep. to you. So yep. uh, make sure we'll be back in a fortnight or so mm -hmm. um, with a new episode of the Practice Odyssey for you. But also, like, if you guys have come across, like, some really great resources for um, recording resources, which you really love and have found super helpful, please let us know. Get in contact with us because we'd probably also find them really helpful. <laughs> yes, and if you if you let us know, um, you can write to us at the practice odyssey at gmail .com, or you can leave us a comment on Instagram or YouTube. All the links are in the show notes. Um, I'll make I'll try and get some of those, and also add maybe a little section in our show notes where you know it's the the resources from our listeners as well. That would be kind of cool of like some <laughs> things that y'all recommended, and that way everyone can have a nice little a nice little play around with audio engineering and sound recording and sound engineering and all those fancy words. So, but yeah, for, so listeners that wraps up our show for this week. Um, just like I said, let us know what you think. You can write to us at the practice odyssey at gmail.com, or you can leave us a rating and comment or comment on Apple podcasts that helps us go up and more people can see our podcast. Uh, you can also subscribe to us on YouTube. Just search the practice odyssey podcast. And there we are. Um, the music in this episode is from Alessandra Woods, a.k.a. me, and the show art is from Ivan Potter-Smith. So until next time, bye! bye.